Hello, everybody. I'm Kobe. Welcome back to Floracy. And it's been a while. Where have I been? What have I been doing? And um, who am I? You know, you've you've been listening to me, or some of you guys have been listening to me for a while now. Um, some of you just started before quarantine, or during quarantine, or any of that stuff. So I'm here to answer some of your questions of um, who am I, uh, where have I been, and uh, am I going to disappear again? So, the short answer of am I going to disappear again, the answer is no. I'm here to stay, finally. Um, seriously, I'm here to stay. So, um, my situation was during quarantine, I had my whole setup, my streaming, my video setup uh, in my room. Um, all the way to May. And then my house, um, I live in Boca Raton, Florida. But I had a really nice job offer in Miami. So um, I left my computer stuff in Boca. So that means that I couldn't uh, film any videos or stream real flight. Um, but I did bring my camera and my microphone so I can do a little bit of racing stuff, but that wasn't really interesting. But um, now I'm in my college dorm. I'm here till December for right now, and then uh, hopefully May, like usual. But um, so I'm gonna have that all that time where I'm just gonna be here. Um, no, no going around, moving this place, moving there, moving here, losing motivation. So yeah, I'm here to stay, guys. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is, um, yeah, I talked about where, where I was, right? Yeah. Anyway, you guys love this kind of stuff where I just kind of mad lib and, you know, just, uh, have kind of a, a conversation with you guys. You know, I, I enjoy it. Um, uh, but the thing is, um, who, who am I? Like, who has been teaching you? Am I just some bum from the street? that just picked up a, a Trojan and was like, hey, I can fly, and then I'm on the sim, and I've just put in millions of hours on the sim, and I'm really good on the sim, but terrible in real life. You know, who 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 am I? So um, I started my uh, RC journey back in 2010 when I lived in Canada. My first airplane was a UMX P-51 from Park Zone with no AS-3X, no anything. Um, it was one of the hardest planes to fly, um, in general, it's tiny, low power, um, no gyro, no anything, and uh, it's just hard in general to fly. And as a first airplane, learning on that um, and crashing it, rebuilding it all the time, um, I think it, it helped because I think nowadays the trainers are too much reliant on the technology instead of the pilot. But... Um, you know, it's good because it's getting more people in the hobby because I feel like if somebody else got a P-51 for Christmas and flew it once and was like, holy crap, this is hard, um, they would have kind of just burned out and quit. But, um, yeah, so after that, um, I moved to Florida in 2012. In 2012, and that's where I really started to pick up. There was uh, one of the largest RC fields which is my home field, uh, West El Rey Regional Park, um, which is Palm Beach RC Association, which has like 300 members, which is a lot. So um, I got a lot of friends there. I had a really good instructor, um, and I just got super motivated. And uh, yeah, so I started just kind of getting plane after plane, and eventually my first airplane was a, it was an E-Flight, Edge 540, one of those, one of those ones that have clear covering, like that yellow clear covering, um, and kind of like a thick airfoil, and then it was uh, kind of a flat tail, as in like there's no airfoil on the tail. So that was my first 3D plane, and then um, I started moving up a little bit. Um, I started actually gaining um, some pretty good skill on the sim, but I didn't have an airplane that can translate that. So, um, I went to a 64, Extreme Flight 64-inch MXS. Yes, pretty sure. 
which I ran on 5S, which isn't the best because they're supposed to run on 6S, but, you know, that's what you get when you buy uh, used stuff is kind of trash. But uh, I had a little bit of airplanes between then, but these are kind of the big milestones. So I had a 64 Extreme Flight MXS, which was cool. And then after that, um, I said, okay, I'm kind of done playing around. I want a gas airplane. So I bought myself an Aeroworks 30cc Yak with a DLE 30 on it. Yeah, that airplane was absolutely terrible. A true atrocity. It wasn't, it, it was one of the quick build ones. Um, I know that Aeroworks have had some amazing airplanes. Um, I know a lot of former uh, Aeroworks team pilots before, unfortunately, they went out of business. But uh, my setup, I was just so young and it was, the motor was giving us problems. Anyway, so uh, I sold that airplane and um, after that, I got a 93 AJ Laser from AJ Aircraft. So that really kind of started um, that snowball effect where, okay, I have a good airplane, I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna buy a better airplane, better airplane, and then now we're here. So um, I, started, I started flying and a friend of mine said, hey, you should try iMac. And I said, oh, what's iMac, you know? And they're like, oh, you basically fly straight lines you know and I was like Ew. but uh <laughs> so anyway um I went to my first iMac contest um uh, it was in amps it was the well oh, I'm getting all out of whack so my first iMac contest we can't really call it a contest was youth masters so the youth masters is basically something that goes on a triple tree you have to be 16 or younger, and you get to basically get taught iMac by a bunch of older kids that have done iMac, stuff like that, which, uh, which I do now. So, uh, yeah, so after that I said, okay, I want a gas airplane. I loved it so much. So I went to Amps, which is a field in Miami, and I competed in basic. Honestly, um... It was a good contest. It was actually, for basic, we were freaking back and forth. and It, <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. And uh, I ended up uh, placing first by about 10 points, which isn't a lot in iMac. So uh, from there, I moved straight up to Sportsman. Um, and then I just started kind of bombing in Sportsman, not, not doing too well, but like fourth place, you know, seventh place in one, second place. I was all over the place. And uh, some of my friends said, um, hey, we do an iMac camp uh, every year at Clover Creek. So um, I got in contact with uh, the people at Clover Creek, Miss Tina, love you. And um, they said, yeah, come to our, our camp this summer. So basically from, we'll say about uh, June 1st-ish, till uh, whenever Nationals and IMAC was, which is around July, July 1st. So I spent about a month with uh, just friends and truly the best people, uh, some of the best people I've ever met. Um, you know, Big John, Dave and Mosier, you know, Ashley Meyer, Miss Tina, all of them are just absolutely amazing people. I can't say enough good things about them. And they, they really um, whipped me into shape because before I was a little shit, still am a little shit sometimes, but um, they, they whipped me into shape and uh, my friends and I, we went to nationals in July. And after that, or not after that, but um, I was competing in sportsmen. I was against my peer in sportsmen and we were... During camp, we were kind of back and forth, same thing, um, and eventually, at the end of the day, uh, I won my first uh, national title in sportsman of 2016, 2016, 2015 or 2016, I won, I won sportsman. So uh, then I moved up to intermediate. I won every single contest in intermediate um, leading up. Oh, and then I came in second. So I came in first in all of my intermediate contests and came in second. 
in in one. So, um, yeah. So after that, uh, I bought a 105 inch AJ laser, um, which I got sponsored by AJ Aircraft, which was awesome. They're great people. Andrew Jetski, Tim Jetski, Linda, all them, amazing people. Uh, I had an amazing time on the team. So I got a 105 AJ laser set up truly for iMac, um, three blade cans. Uh, the fuel tank was right over the wing tube or over the center of gravity. So as the fuel kind of, um, as I used the fuel during the flight, it wouldn't change the center of gravity. It had uh, soundproofing in the cowling. It was a truly, truly amazing airplane. Um, and then I went to camp again uh, for the same amount of time, um, that next summer. And then I won, uh, intermediate national championship for, for IMAC, which was very cool. And, um, after that school really started to kind of pick up as I was getting into my, my junior and senior year. So I didn't really have time to compete. Um, I was playing a lot of sports, so, um, I kind of, you know, died off after, after my, my second national title. I didn't, I didn't compete in a real IMAC contest after that. I might have competed in one, but um, yeah, so after that, I kind of just chilled, and I really wanted to focus on freestyle. Um, yeah, so I sold my 105, and then I bought uh, Jace Ducia's, a his V1.5 Extra 300, which is the prototype V2 Extra... It was an amazing airplane. Unfortunately, um, it crashed last year, but um, I have a new one in the box that's been sitting forever. Uh, I just haven't had time to build it. I suck at building. I wouldn't trust myself. I have to do some stuff to get it ready for the build. Um, and anyway, I just haven't had motivation to build it. But uh, yeah, so so that's me. Um, I've had a lot of a lot of amazing people. A lot of amazing things happen to me in this in this hobby. Uh, a lot of doors have opened for me for full scale and um, a bunch of contacts and just, uh, yeah. So that's me. I hope you guys still listen to me because now you know that um, I'm an iMac or I was an iMac guru and I wasn't a freestyle guru, but <laughs> uh, that's why I focus so much on, on lines and precision and stuff. It's just kind of um, built into me now. So uh, yeah, I hope that uh, this is a good little video back, just kind of reintroducing myself, um, giving you guys a little update, and uh, yeah, so I appreciate you guys watching, like, share, and subscribe, because we got a lot of cool things coming up, and trust me, we do, so uh, yeah.